Hello, I'm Open Government Assistant Attorney General Nancy Creer, Washington State Office of the Attorney General. This video provides electronic public records training. This video supplements our office's online training materials covering the Public Records Act basics. We assume that viewers of this video have already accessed those or other materials covering the PRA basics. As described in those other training materials, the PRA provides the public access to paper as well as electronic records. Today, we will cover more specific information on the production and disclosure of electronic records. We will also discuss updating and improving technology information services at an agency. Finally, we will refer to several electronic records retention training materials and training resources available at the Washington Secretary of State's Office State Archives. Training on these electronic records topics is required for public records officers. While not required for other persons, this information may also be useful for other agency staff or officials. This training is consistent with the Office's advisory PRA model rules. This training was prepared in early 2019. The legislature can amend the public records laws in the future. The courts can also interpret the laws. Consequently, and as a reminder, there may be developments in the law after this video was prepared. Several updates in the law are often posted in materials on the Attorney General's Office website, Open Government Training page. The office's website is at www.atg.wa.gov. This training video contains eight segments where we will review 1. PRA definition of public record includes electronic records. 2. Some court decisions regarding electronic records. 3. Creating electronic records. 4. Electronic PRA requests. 5. Locating and producing electronic records. 6. Updating and improving technology and information services. 7. Retention of electronic records. And 8. Other resources. Let's begin. In this first segment, we will cover a few preliminary matters, including a brief recap of the PRA. Back in 1972, when Washington's PRA was enacted through an initiative of the people, public agencies lived primarily in a paper-based environment, with documents largely written by hand or created with typewriters. Those paper records were located on desks, in paper folders, and in filing cabinets or storage boxes. But the PRA also applies to electronic records. You may recall that the definition of public record is any writing related to the conduct of government, which is prepared, owned, used, or retained by any state or local agency, regardless of physical form or characteristic. Writing includes every means of recording any form of communication or representation including, but not limited to, letters, words, pictures, sounds, symbols, or a combination thereof, tapes, photographic films and prints, motion pictures, films and video recordings, magnetic or punch cards, discs, sound recordings, and other documents, including existing data compilations from which information may be obtained or translated. So, let's apply this definition of public record to today's public agencies. Today, an agency has and uses both paper and electronic records. Today, a public record could be an email, text message, a video, a digital picture or image, a social media posting or website posting, electronic Word document or Excel spreadsheet, electronic PowerPoint, a database, or other electronic record. Today, an agency may have records created by a variety of devices or computer software programs, not just by handwriting or with typewriters. Today, an agency's records may be located not just on desks or in filing cabinets, but also on agency servers, computers, the cloud, smartphones, email accounts, social media accounts, CDs, DVDs, or flash drives. As a final preliminary matter, as I mentioned, a public record is one that is prepared, owned, used, or retained by an agency. You can remember this PRA public record definition by recalling the first letters, P-O-U-R, poor, like a pitcher. This means a public record is not just what an agency creates, but also includes documents created by citizens or private companies that are used or received by a government for a governmental purpose. To illustrate, an email 
which of course is an electronic record, sent by a member of the public to a public agency and concerning agency business is a public record subject to the PRA. A public record may also include public records created by public employees or officials on non-agency equipment if the public records were used by the agency. For example, the courts have held that agency work documents, including electronic records on personal devices, like a personal computer, personal cell phone, or personal email account of an agency employee or official are subject to a request under the Public Records Act. We'll talk more about that in the next segment. What new types of electronic public records might be created in the future, or where electronic records may be located or stored in the future, may continue to evolve as technology develops. Later, we will discuss that if an agency is considering purchasing new technology to assist it in its work, such as buying new software or new storage for electronic records, it will want to consider the records creation, production, and retention issues that may be associated with the records generated or retained by that technology. As I mentioned in the introduction, some court decisions have addressed an agency's production of electronic public records in response to a PRA request. That is, not only does the PRA public record definition state that the law applies to electronic records, court cases have provided several particular examples and discussions that help inform our understanding of an agency's obligations under the PRA with respect to electronic records. To illustrate, in Meckling v. Monroe and West v. Vermillion, the Court of Appeals recognized that a local official agency's email related to the conduct of government, stored on a personal or business computer, was subject to the PRA. In Meckling, the court also held that the personal email addresses for those emails were also subject to disclosure because the email accounts had been used for agency business. In O'Neill v. City of Shoreline, the state Supreme Court held that if an email is a public record, then the metadata associated with that electronic record is also a public record and can be specifically requested. Metadata is the data behind the electronic record, such as when it was created or edited. In Fisher Broadcasting v. City of Seattle, the state Supreme Court confirmed that an agency database of information about audio and video recordings is a public record subject to the PRA. In that case, the court also recognized that since the PRA does not require an agency to create a new record that did not exist at the time the agency received the records request, when it comes to databases, there is not always a simple dichotomy between producing an existing record and creating a new one. And it is possible that part of a database is responsive to a public records request. The Neighborhood Alliance of Spokane County versus County of Spokane decision involved disclosure of an electronic record, in that case, an agency seating chart. The court recognized the record was a public record and held the agency needed to conduct an adequate and reasonable search of more than one record system if there are additional sources for the record where it is reasonably likely to be found. In Neeson v. Pierce County, the state Supreme Court held that text messages on a local official's personal cell phone are a type of electronic record subject to a PRA request when they meet the definition of public record. In West v. Puyallup, the Court of Appeals held that social media postings in an official's personal social media account are subject to the PRA when they meet the definition of public record. In sum, like the language of the PRA itself, court decisions confirm that an agency's, including an agency employee's or official's electronic records of government business are also subject to public records disclosure. In this segment, we will talk about some considerations in the creation of electronic public records. Given the proliferation of new technologies and devices used for agency business, and particularly those that create or store electronic records, an agency should have its employees and officials think before they create public records. One way to accomplish that goal is to have policies addressing when agency records are generated or received by agency staff and officials and where they are to be retained. Why? The reason is this. It is helpful for an agency to manage its public records from the time they are created and not to wait until a records request is received 
or wait until it's time to look at archiving the records that are required to be retained for a period of time. For example, an agency could implement policies for its employees and officials to address the following subjects or similar subjects. Acceptable agency email use, email folder structures, records on agency servers, storage protocols, remote access to agency servers when authorized, use of agency devices such as computers and cell phones, use of personal devices, computers and cell phones, for agency business or bring your own device, BYOD. Use of personal accounts, email, social media, website for agency business. Agency website and social media postings. Use of electronic devices during board meetings. Required records retention training. IT security training. And new IT purchases, procedures. If an agency has policies on these topics, but the agency has not updated them in several years, it may be time to take a look at them again. Technology advances rapidly, and statutory and case law developments can also impact agency obligations. Sample records policy topic areas, or sample policies, are also available on the websites of the Washington Secretary of State State Archives and the Municipal Research and Services Center. If an agency is also looking at updating its PRA procedural rules, it can consider the Attorney General's Office model rules at Chapter 44-14 of the Washington Administrative Code. They were amended in 2018. The PRA provides that local governments should consult the model rules in developing their PRA local ordinances. In this short segment, we are going to briefly talk about how a requester might submit a PRA records request electronically to an agency. The PRA requires agencies to have procedures providing for public access to public records and to provide for the fullest assistance. While the PRA provides that there is no official format for a request, many agencies have set up systems that allow for an electronic submission of a PRA request. This request could be submitted through a portal, or by filling out an online form, or by email, to name a few electronic submission examples. An agency should have information on its website explaining how a requester can submit a records request. For example, while the PRA directs that an agency is required to accept a request submitted by email, an agency can designate which email address accepts PRA requests, and the agency should publicly identify that email address. A requester would then send the PRA request to that email address if emailing a request. If an agency does not have a website, it should make information about how to submit requests publicly available through other means. Using the methods set up by the agency for submission of records requests, including electronically, typically is the most efficient way to begin the processing of a request. If a requester has a question about the best way to submit a request electronically to an agency, he or she should contact the agency's public records officer. As a final comment on records requests submitted electronically, note that the PRA provides that an agency may deny a bot request. A bot request is a request that was automatically generated by a computer program or script when it is one of multiple requests from the requester received within a 24-hour period. The agency must establish that responding to the bot request will cause excessive interference with other agency essential functions. Now that an agency has electronic public records and has received a request for those records, electronically or otherwise, what's next? In this segment, we are going to discuss several subtopics related to locating and producing or disclosing electronic records. Those subtopics are legislative intent, searches, redacting electronic records, copy fees for electronic records, and production of electronic records. The state legislature has several times expressed its intent with respect to electronic public records. For example, in RCW 43.105.351, the legislature stated, broad public access to state and local government records and information has potential for expanding citizen access to that information and for improving government services. Electronic methods for locating and transferring information can improve linkages between 
and among citizens, organizations, businesses, and governments. Information must be managed with great care to meet the objectives of citizens and their governments. It is the intent of the legislature to encourage state and local governments to develop, store, and manage their public records and information in electronic formats to meet their missions and objectives. Further, it is the intent of the legislature for state and local governments to set priorities for making public records widely available electronically to the public. In 2010, the legislature further stated, the internet provides for instant access to public records at a significantly reduced cost to the agency and the public. Agencies are encouraged to make commonly requested records available on agency websites. When an agency has made records available on its website, members of the public with computer access should be encouraged to preserve taxpayer resources by accessing those records online. Once an agency receives a PRA request, it begins its search. It may be able to locate and produce some records right away, or it may need more time to process the request, including time to locate responsive records. Assuming the agency needs to conduct a search for electronic records that may be responsive to a public records request, typically an agency will use search terms. The terms will come either directly from the request or the agency will use other search terms that will enable it to conduct an adequate and reasonable search. Often, the more specific the request, the easier it is to come up with search terms. While a requester does not need to know the name or title of the records he or she is requesting, the better the description given, the greater are the chances that the search can be more efficient. The agency will need to search in multiple record systems if responsive records are likely to be located in more than one system. For example, if a responsive records might be located on agency servers and also in or on an employee's or official's personal device or account, all those locations must be searched. The personal devices and accounts can be searched by the employee or official and responsive records turned over to the agency. If the employee or official needs help, he or she should work with the public records officer. After an agency locates responsive records, it will review the records for exempt information to see if the exempt information needs to be withheld or redacted. A redaction is a withholding of part of a public record based on an exemption in law that permits non-disclosure of that information. An agency redacts copies of records. For example, in redacting a social security number in a paper record, an agency might take a black pen or white out to cover that exempt information in a copy before releasing the rest of the copy of the paper record to the requester. In redacting records that exist only in electronic format, the principle is the same. An agency can redact only exempt information and must release the rest of the record. However, the mechanics of redaction may vary for electronic records depending upon the electronic format of the record and the agency's software. To illustrate, an electronic record may be a portable document file or PDF of a memo. Perhaps the memo was originally in paper but was copied by the agency into a PDF format, or perhaps the memo currently exists only in a PDF format. Copying a paper record into an electronic format does not create a new record for PRA purposes. It's just one means of making a copy. The agency may have software such as Adobe Acrobat Pro that enables it to electronically place a black box over the exempt information in a copy of that electronic record and produce the rest of the electronic record in an electronic version. Or the record may be an email and the agency may have software that allows it to electronically redact information in a PDF copy of the email and produce the rest of the email. Or the electronic record may be a video. The agency may have software that enables it to pixelate or put a dark circle over an area of the recorded image that is exempt from disclosure, and then produce the rest of the video. Again, what redaction mechanics are used with respect to a particular record will depend upon the format of the record and what technology the agency has. Regardless of the redaction mechanics, an agency must still have a method to provide a citation and a brief explanation for the exemption. In addition, if responsive records are located, an agency will determine if any copy fees apply and will let the requester know what those are. 
Agencies may charge copy fees for copies of electronic records, just like they can charge fees for paper copies of paper records. Agencies can charge actual costs after documenting those costs and holding a public hearing. There are limits in the PRA as to what is included in actual costs. For example, agencies cannot charge for staff time to redact electronic records. Electronic copy costs may include the actual cost of the electronic production or file transfer of the record, the use of any cloud-based data storage processing service, and the cost of sending or transmitting electronic records, including the use of a physical media device, such as a CD, DVD, or thumb drive. An agency could choose to charge statutory default fees, which are listed in RCW 4256-120. After adopting a rule describing that it would be an undue hardship for the agency to determine actual costs. The Act includes other fee provisions. For example, an agency cannot charge for access to or downloading of records it routinely posts on its website prior to the receipt of the request, unless the requester specifically asks that the agency provide records through other means. An agency may impose the actual cost of a customized service charge when the request would require the use of IT expertise to prepare data compilations or when such customized access services are not used by the agency for other business purposes. The agency must notify the requester and take other steps if it chooses to do a customized service. For more details on what a particular agency charges for copies of its electronic records, see the agency's fee schedule. Upon receipt of payment for copies, an agency may produce copies of electronic records in a number of ways or a combination of ways. The PRA does not specify any one format. The method may vary from agency to agency. The courts have said that agencies have some flexibility, and what is reasonable and technically feasible for one agency might not be so for a different agency. For example, an agency may have a copy of the record or records on its website and provide the requester a link to the requested records. If the requester notifies the agency that he or she cannot access the records through the internet, the agency must provide copies of the records or allow the requester to view copies using an agency computer. An agency might also use an online portal, enabling it to provide copies of records electronically through a file transfer protocol, FTP site. In that situation, the agency uploads copies of the requested records to the site and gives the requester information about how to access the records and how long they will be available there. Sometimes these portals have other capabilities as well, such as allowing the requester to track the status of their request or to make payments for copies of records. An agency might also provide records on a CD, DVD, thumb drive, or other portable device, and then arrange for the device to be mailed to the requester or picked up. An agency might be able to provide some records via email. Email delivery can have some issues that are problematic, however, such as size or records format limitations on the agency or the requester's email systems. In addition, virus software may impede some delivery. Note that a requester may ask that an agency produce an electronic record in native format. The native file format is a method used by computer operating systems or file management to arrange data. For example, when you save a Microsoft Word document, the data in the file is customized and optimized to be read in Microsoft Word. So if a requester asks for the Word record to be provided in native format, this means he or she does not want it converted to a PDF format prior to production, but wants it provided in Word. However, if redactions are required, it might not be possible to provide the record in native format if the redactions need to be made in a PDF or other format. A copy of an electronic record should be produced in the requested electronic format if reasonably feasible. Reasonableness and technical feasibility are the touchstones for providing electronic records. Translating a record into an alternative electronic format at the request of the requester or scanning a paper record to create a PDF is not creating a new record. In response to a particular request, it is possible that agency provides electronic records in several ways. For example, perhaps a first installment of responsive records is an email with links to records on the agency's website. And later installments of records are PDFs provided via email or on a CD or perhaps all the records can be provided via an agency portal. 
As technologies develop in the future, there may be other methods that will enable agencies to deliver electronic copies of public records. When agencies obtain new technologies or are looking to update or improve existing technologies, they should consider not only the agency's business operation needs, but also records retention and disclosure requirements for records created by or retained in those systems. A decision to purchase new or update existing technologies may involve a discussion with agency management, IT staff, records officers, and legal staff. Without buying new technology, however, agencies can also look at whether they could make their current technology more robust. For example, an agency could make commonly requested records available on its website and provide a search function or some instructions for requesters on how to locate and access website records. An agency could post information on its social media page to direct requesters to its website to find commonly requested records. An agency can look at whether any copies of its commonly requested data could be provided through an open data website portal, such as data.wa.gov. An agency could look at whether some of its employee positions besides the public records officer could benefit from receiving training on locating and producing public records with the agency's current technology. Agencies can also look at whether grants or master state contracts, for example, for enterprise content management systems or cloud storage systems can provide resources to improve their technologies at lower costs or less effort. Finally, agencies could develop policies addressing technology issues, such as if and when agency employees may use personal devices or personal accounts for public agency business and what responsibilities and requirements, therefore, attach to the employee and those electronic records on those devices or accounts. It may be necessary for an agency to consider purchasing more public agency devices for employees or officials, such as agency cell phones or portable laptops, depending upon the volume and nature of that agency's business that needs to be conducted on portable devices. The records retention requirements and schedules are not under the Public Records Act, but instead are within the records retention laws in RCW 40.14. Information about those laws and the schedules is on the website of the Office of the Secretary of State, Washington State Archives. Retention periods for records are based on their content, not the format. Electronic records are subject to the same records retention requirements as our paper records. The State Archives has free training as well as consultation services and advice sheets for state and local agencies that need assistance in understanding retention requirements. Several of the State Archives resources provide guidance on electronic records, for example, on managing database records, things to consider with cloud services and storage, capturing social media content for retention, retaining text messages, keeping electronic records in an electronic format, and applying for local government records grants for technology and similar topics. For more information on electronic records retention and management, contact the Washington State Archives. For additional resources on the Public Records Act, see the office's website at www.atg.wa.gov. The office has PRA and training resources, including but not limited to videos such as this one, a manual, as well as the advisory PRA model rules in Chapter 44-14 WAC. As the Assistant Attorney General for Open Government, the Ombuds, I can also provide general information, technical assistance, and training. The office also has a Local Government Public Records Act consultant, who is a PRA resource for local government agencies on responding to records requests, seeking additional public and private resources for developing and updating technology information services, and mitigating liability and costs of compliance. Thank you again for your interest in electronic public records in Washington State. We hope you found this video informative.